All right, guys. So we are starting chapter seven. Uh, chapter seven uh, is where we kind of start the geometry portion of math one. We are pretty much finished with the algebra portion, though we will go back and review somewhat significantly. But uh, from this point on, each chapter covers generally some topic in uh, geometry. And uh, starting chapter seven, we are gonna be doing uh, some drawings of some three-dimensional figures to start here. So let's look at it. Um, section 7-1, three different drawings. The first drawing we're doing is known as a net. You probably know what a net is. Uh, I say the net is the unfolding of a three-dimensional figure. The unfolding of a three-dimensional figure. All right? We can take a three-dimensional figure, unfold it, and make it into a two-dimensional diagram. That is what's known as a net. Uh, sewing would be one place where this is commonly used. Um, a net shows all the surfaces in one view, and when we draw a net, we will try to label the sides or lengths when we can. So I've given you three uh, diagrams here of basic nets. The first diagram is a prism. It's a hexagonal prism, so the, the top and the bottom Right, the top and the bottom are hexagons, and in a prism, the other sides are rectangles, or sometimes parallelograms if it's not a right prism. And that's what I have here. I have the top and bottom are hexagons, and the other sides are rectangles. Here I have a triangular prism, so the top and bottom are triangles. All right, that would be this side and this side. And then wrapped around those triangles, are three rectangles. And then last up, I have a pyramid. A pyramid is made up of some shape plus triangles. In this case, the shape is also a triangle. The bottom of this is also a triangle. So all four sides are triangles, right? All right, those are three basic nets. One that we're going to try to draw a net for is just a box. A box is really just a rectangular prism. And we're going to try to draw the net for this box. Uh, we want to label the sides. And when I say label the sides, I mean put the lengths in for each side in your net. You might want to try to pause the video for a minute and see if you can draw it. And see if you match mine. So this net should look something like this. I usually start by drawing the body of the box. All right? This would be the box that is 10 centimeters long. And what I've done is I've taken all four sides, now not the ends, but all four sides, and I've unwrapped them. And they're one big flat piece, right? Uh, the important thing about this is how you draw the four sides within this big piece. Now the sides have lengths of four and three. So maybe I go ahead and I make that a four, and then that is a three, and then that is a four, and then that is a three. It is important that the threes and fours alternate because here they alternate four, then three, then four, then three, right? When you unwrap it, they would still alternate. And that just leaves me with, I didn't want to do that. That leaves me with the little end cap here. There'll be a little end cap on each side. So I can put those anywhere I want. Maybe I put it here. But here's the important thing about the end cap. This side would be three to match this one. And this side would need to be four to match this one. 
because if you folded this box back together, this and this would need to match up with each other. So they need to be the same length. And then maybe you put the, uh, another end cap like right here. And this would be three because uh, this side here and this side here, when I fold the box back together, need to match up with each other. All right, so there you go. There is the drawing of a net for a rectangular prism or a box. All right, that's one type of drawing you will do on your homework. The second type of drawing you'll do on your homework is an isometric drawing. Isometric drawings are, uh, they show a corner view, right? Here's an example of one. And you'll notice how, as you stand from the front of this thing, the, uh, the corners stick out at you. That's why it's called a corner view, I guess. Uh, we see three views of the, of the three-dimensional shape. We see the top, we see the front, and we see the side, usually the right side. See how that's labeled? We got the right side, we got the front. We're looking at the corner, though. We're, we're kind of straight on from the front corner. And, of course, you can see the top of it. Um, all right, so how do we draw these? One of the things you will do is uh, you will take a shape like this one and you will have to draw it on, uh, on dot paper to uh, represent a three-dimensional shape. And here's my advice for doing that. My advice for doing that is uh, first determine your front and right side. So like maybe this is my right side and this is my front. And my advice, if you're not, okay, if you're good at this, boom, go to it. If you're not good at this, my advice is uh, draw the front and right sides at the base. the correct lengths. For instance, my right side is just one block wide. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw the right side one block wide. So I've drawn the right side. Now the front side is two blocks wide. So when I draw the front, I'm going to go one, two blocks wide. Notice, this is my front. I know it sits diagonal, right? It's the front corner sits at me. And this is my right side. And if you get that drawn, you can usually build it from there. Uh, from there, if I were doing this, I would go up the side and see how tall it is. It's three blocks tall, so I would start building. There's one block, now it's two blocks tall, and now it's three blocks tall. So that'll be the correct height, and I can cap it off at the top by drawing the diamond. You see the diamond here? That makes a flat top when you draw the diamond, and it doesn't make it any taller. And then maybe I'd go up the right side. The right side is only too tall over here, so I'm going to go up one block, two blocks, and I'm going to cap that off with a diamond. And really now it's just a matter of filling in the missing parts, all right? Even those two now, and you can, you can totally see the shape. But I'll fill in all the dots, or all the lines between the dots. And there we go. I have matched up my side. I got my front, my right. And I have matched the shape I was given perfectly. All right, you will have a couple of those to do for homework. And make sure you get dot paper. I, I have some provided for you. All right. 
The last type of drawing is known as a orthographic drawing. An orthographic drawing is one where we take a uh, isometric drawing and we do a flat surface drawing of each of the three views. All right, it's a drawing that shows three separate views, a top view, a front view, and a right side view. Um, well, let me just write this down. So, we are going to have a flat drawing uh, of each view. Depth is shown with a line. Maybe. Oops. All right, so generally orthographic drawings do not show any depth. You draw them as if you have no depth perception. But sometimes we can show depth by putting a line in. I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so first, I'm going to do this uh, three separate views of this drawing. I'm going to do a, uh, a front view. I'm going to do a right side view. And I am going to do a top view. Let's start with the right side view. So the right, or, I'm sorry, the front view. The front view is if I was standing here and looking straight at it from the front. If I was looking at this figure straight from the front, look, it's, it's one block tall right here, it's two blocks tall right here, and it's three blocks tall right here. So my view might look like this. Three blocks tall, two blocks tall, one block tall. And that might be my view. Now, some, pe some people would say put in lines. Some people would say put in lines to show depth. And what I mean by that is this entire shape is at the same depth, except for this square right here sticks out further. So some people would have you put a line like that to show that this square here sticks out further. I'm actually not that concerned about it. In fact, I kind of like to put all the lines in so that you can see the squares better. Or maybe I make them dotted lines so that you can see them like they're not really there, but they're dashed lines to, to give it some uh, perspective. But that is what the front view might look like. Again, you know, this square right here sticks out further, which is why I made solid lines around it. Let's go to the right side. So the right side view would be like I'm standing here and I'm looking at it straight on from the right side. And in this case, it's three blocks tall and one block tall. So I need a figure that is three blocks tall, but then one block tall. It might look like that. Now, if I was going to show depth, all the blocks are at a different depth. Uh, of course, this one and this one are at the same depth, but they're not really next to each other, so this might look like this. I would have all solid lines because all blocks are at a different depth. And I like the way that one's drawn. I like the lines in there. All right, and last is the top view. Now, the top view has one additional thing to think about, and that is when you're looking at it from the top, like, are you looking at it from this side on top, or are you looking at it from this side on top? I am going to be looking at it from front on top. So, that might look like this. It goes like three across and then one across, all right? So on top it might be three across 
and one across. I don't know about that. I got a little thin there, I think. And your lines might look like this. And there we go. That might be what the top view looks like as a flat drawing. All right. Those are orthographic drawings. You got all three types now. You got nets, uh, orthographic drawings, and isometric drawings. Good luck on the homework.